Recording? Welcome to the Radio Rejects Podcast. It feels good to be back. It feels good in the studio. We got first timers in the studio. Um, first timers, well, not, we, we were talking a little bit before, like you guys have done interviews before too as well, but um, as always, my name is Lou from the Radio Rejects Podcast. That's what this is. That's what this is all about. To my right, as always, the man of sounds, the man of many, many things. Savvy. Savvy. Drop the DJ because he's doing so many more things in life. <laughs> Um, and then we always like to have our guests introduce. Well, now we know you guys, but we want you to introduce yourselves um, individually, and then as a collective. And then also, if you could throw at the end of that, just maybe like, why you're here? What do you What do you do? Just go ahead. All right. So I'll go first. I guess my name is Luis. I'm the owner of Forgotten Angel, one of the owners, and creative director. All right. My name is Alex. I am the other part owner of Forgotten Angel, and I handle a lot of like the the printing stuff that goes on. Okay. And then uh, why are you guys here, let's say? Not just for the interview, but I mean, like, what do you do? What is Forgotten Angel? So we're a streetwear brand. You know, okay. we're based off Chicago, but um, we really try to put clothes out there, like lifestyle, like clothes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've known you guys for, for quite some time. We've done events, too, as well. So people have, have gone to some of the events that we've done as, a, as our own collective, too, as well. Um, we've collaborated in some, some ways here or there. Um, and you guys have, I mean, I kind of just jump right into it. You guys have gone through um, somewhat of name changes and such like that. Um, I, can you kind of elaborate on that, too? I want like maybe like your, your history as far as where you've come from um, and then it kind of jump into why... This new name change? Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so originally we, you know, we, we started the brand with Abrachi. You know, I've known Alex for since, what, high school? Mm -hmm. Freshman year? Yeah, freshman year I met Alex. And we just had an idea, like, you know, let's start a clothing brand. And the, the original brand was uh, Abrachi. I'm, like, I'm sure a lot of people from Joliet are familiar with that. I know Savvy's familiar with I have with gear. That. I have some of the gear from yeah. Abrachi, too. Some custom uh, shirts you guys made me from my own shows. Yeah, that's some vintage Abrachi. stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so during quarantine, um, you know, when we were locked up. Uh, <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> locked up in, in my room. Yeah. <laughs> playing Warzone all <laughs> No, but, uh, yeah, so, we're, you know, we had a lot of think, you know. Uh, we wanted to rebrand the brand. Like, we had a brochure for about two years, and, you know, we we learned a lot from it, from production to, like, we, we, we're we self-taught in everything, from uh, promotional, from production to designing, everything. We're self-taught. We didn't know a single thing about any of this stuff. And, um, like... Yeah, so like during quarantine, yeah, we uh we we rebrand after learning everything, we rebranded, <clears throat> and um, like we just thought of a better name, better vision. Yeah, the you know the first brand, like it was more of a test, air and trial, like, you know, what do you got to add on to that? It was a journey, man. It was cool. Uh, it was. It was a lot of ups and downs. A lot of times, you just want to rip your hair out when things aren't going right, especially like when we had the Abrachi stuff. Yeah. Um, it just wasn't doing what we needed it to do, and we just realized, like, man, we gotta, we gotta start making changes, and and maybe that's how the whole rebranding thing came. So we had that the, the vision, you know, was, the style started coming up, the designs, and then, but we're like, man, we need to rebrand it, but the name kind of has to fit what we're going for. So then that's when we we started thinking, of, like, we thought of the name Forgotten Angel. I think we were using. Angel stuff before when we had our brachi, mm -hmm. so it, I made, think it, so, easy, yeah. it yeah. made it easier for us. So once we we re, uh, rebranded, it all just it all just started coming more naturally. We didn't I have think to, that's what we happened. Didn't right. We didn't yeah. have to force anything. Yeah, yeah, right. Because like in, in the beginning, like like I said, we were learning with a brachi, like because we didn't know a single thing. So like we we didn't really have a vision for a brachi, and it was just more of a brand for us to learn how to like make things, how to design things, and. Uh, well, right after we learned everything, we knew what vision we wanted to go to uh, or go with. And after we had that vision, we, we decided to change it. Well, originally, we were actually going to start a second brand, but we decided just to, like, keep it one. And Yeah, because when I, uh, when I seen Forgotten Angel, at first I thought it was under Al Bracci, but it was just maybe like a, um, like under the umbrella, but it was just kind of like the, like this is the, maybe this season's. 
right, right, right. was going to be right, forgotten. Right, right. And then I realized you guys were doing a rebrand and you like legitimately made an announcement and everything like that too as well. So, I mean, there's, it is true. Like there's some stuff that I have from Abrachi like not been worn and I was yeah. like, I'm going to keep that shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, that was nerve wracking because we were like, how are people going to react? Are they going to like it? Is it going to make something worse or like what, what's going to happen? You know, and yeah. luckily like, thank God, but things worked out. Yeah, I think it, you, it, it it flowed really well. Do you think that was more of a result because ultimately you guys are running the company, so it's, if it's something that you like more, you're like the people that already like us are gonna like this too. Was yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, thought I, behind it. Yeah, right. That that was the thought about it because like we felt like with, with the new name, we personally liked the brand way better. Yeah. Then I'm not saying I didn't like a brache. Yeah. But we just liked it way better because there was a better vision. Yeah. With it, and I just felt like we could uh, put it out there way better. Mm-hmm. Now, does it doesn't necessarily? I mean, with the name change, did it did it change the the overall creative process or like the creative um, intuition for making certain designs? Did it did it like maybe it flowed better with this name, or maybe you guys realized that the the designs you were making with Abrachi you were like, okay, now it, it it doesn't feel like it fits this name anymore. We need to do it. Yeah, uh, I agree on that. So, like, basically, what. It just, the, the new designs we were creating, what we were getting inspired by, didn't fit with the word Abrachi. Yeah. And we felt with the name of Forgotten Angel, it was fitting. Because we get inspired by, like, the music industry, the... I mean, everything that goes around in this world, you know? Like, mm-hmm. um, what else would you say we get inspired by? Like, um, Well, yeah, like, music's a, a big one. Um, and then, too, uh, I don't know, just our, our style in general. You know, it's kind of like the, the style is kind of the way we were dressing already so um you know it was like well we would wear it so we felt like everybody else would probably think it's cool too um yeah. and then um yeah it's pretty much i mean i remember the, like the first time we went over to your your guys' oh, right, right. shop yeah and like sab's like okay we're gonna go down there and i think that was the first time we had a drone too and we went down there and i was like it was like it looked like an as like a legit shop i was expecting to see some kids smoking a cigarette like printing, <laughs> printing shit in the background oh they back they back <laughs> they back is that when we had the old setup down there? no yeah, yeah. yeah. we upgraded actually, everything yeah really yeah yeah because so, yeah, like the images you 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 sent over i only got to see like scoped yeah. images but then i remember back then you guys had the wheel uh, like yeah, turn yeah. around and everything like that do you guys still have that yeah, yeah so we still have that the first one that you guys seen was like a very old one because uh-huh. when we started we bought a used one they are very expensive so like when we were learning we didn't want to buy like an expensive one right mm-hmm. so yeah eventually when we did the name change we started taking everything way more serious we, we ended up investing more into the equipment yeah yeah so like now we have a better one brand new one and uh everything just runs a lot smoother yeah and, less mistakes yeah. oh my god yeah yeah. Because of it being like an older used model, like you, you find that with the the newer one, just like with anything, like computers and all that kind yeah. of stuff, the equipment you have yeah. made it easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty much. Like yeah. say for this, it would uh, I wouldn't be able to print this as easily because things would just go so wrong. And then if during the production, you know, these hoodies are the, the blanks are expensive. So if you're if the machine's messing up, now you're just you just you just cost some money at this point. From, yeah. From you know things not coming out right. So just the them. upgrade would literally like it, us upgrading it really saved us. Uh, a lot of time and money, you know? Yeah, because that's the thing, too, is, like, with with you wanting to start something like this, it's not like, oh, I got a design. You have to print. Right. And you have to mis- you have to make a lot of mistakes yeah. oh, yeah, to do it. Learn. I mean, we could have chose what a lot of brands do, and a lot of brands, what they do, they, they find manufacturers and they print for them, but we, we, we want to be able to control a lot of things because, like, if it's under our hands, we could control the, the quality. And mm-hmm. that's one thing, like, when I put stuff out there, or when we put stuff out there, like we want to make sure that we put out quality stuff, you know. Right. Yeah. So, um, what I was gonna say too, as well, is like how how has the the machinery of things how has that uh, affected your ability to do things? Like I know the stones and, and like the the prints and everything like that. Like, did that come with the new machinery, like the new equipment, and you guys were able to like, oh, now we're able to do these things. You had those those kind of thoughts of doing those before and then now you're like, oh, I, I, we get to do it because we have this. Yeah, so like I would say that, I mean, once we got the new machines, like we were like, what's, we wanted to like, okay, we could print a shirt now. What's the next thing that we could do? You know, we wanted to learn more things than just printing a shirt. Mm-hmm. So we tried to get more creative with it. So one of the things was uh, getting the rhinestones and which a lot of people love. Our, we have, you know, our following loves rhinestones. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we actually found a manufacturer in China that actually makes us the transfers. And 
we're able to print. Well, we uh, we print the we print the print and then we put the rhinestones over it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we could get super creative with it too. A couple of drafts that we did where we did. Like the rhinestone would literally be like integrated in the design. Well, like mm -hmm. so, like kind of right like here. this. Yeah. This is yeah. this is a good example, but there's other ones where literally like the design will be, uh, like gaps for the rhinestone. So we have that you know that type of the freedom. So we could literally just do kind of whatever that, you know comes to our head. And it was like one of those moments where like your yeah. mind blew oh. out. You're like oh my god. Because yeah. <laughs> if, if we would have cho chosen the traditional style where we had a manufacturer make our stuff, they probably wouldn't be down to test. You know, uh, they wouldn't be down to like do that for yeah. us, just because like that's not really in the industry. That's not something people normally do. Yeah. But since we, we have like we're able to like create anything we want, we have the machines. We're able to like you know extend what we want to do. Like, there's no there's no limit. Yeah, I think you know? it's it's true. Is like when you guys uh, are printing shirts. There's there's it's it's kind of like when. Um, when people come to us and, and, and we have the podcast equipment, there's people that are trying to get into podcasts and they see all the equipment and they're like, holy shit, you guys have a lot. Like, you guys have a good setup. Right. So with you guys, there's people that are probably like, I want to make shirts. And then they get the the easiest version of trying to make shirts and then they go to you and like, oh, like these guys have like a legit setup. Yeah. Like, right. it makes your life a little bit more easier, but it also shows like when I seen how you guys are doing it, it already immediately on first impression shows a level of professionalism because mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, yeah. like they're not they're not really fucking around. Like they actually have everything they, they need. Yeah. And you're trying to make it in house. Like, yeah. oh, no, you're, definitely. you're trying to do everything now. When you were saying with the rhinestones, you get them from China, like is with the recent things that are going on, everything like that. It, does it hinder your ability to get things on time? Does it make delays? Do you have even with like hats or or, you know, garments? Does it has you have you noticed like an effect? Yeah. So like, yeah, there was a huge effect where they were short staff on employees where they couldn't keep up with production. Mm -hmm. And it did uh, affect us like we wouldn't get things on time either because of production or shipping. Like, you know, uh, I think everyone got affected by this. But uh, we learned to, like, you know, just deal with it. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it did affect us in a way. Uh, as of right now, it hasn't really... Everything's been going smoothly. Uh, one thing, though, that we do get... Like, shipping usually comes through containers, through boats. But we actually, like... Uh, we pay air flight. So everything comes on planes. So we... we we pay more for that, but everything gets here. You're not dealing with what yeah, other right. people are dealing with right now, like, too. Yeah, like the containers are getting stuck on, you know, the ships and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not really dealing with that because we do get everything. Since we are smaller, we're not ordering, like, containers full of things. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're actually getting, like, so everything that comes to China actually is getting flown out. It, it flies out here yeah. on a plane. One thing there is a big shortage on is, like, um, the printing supplies. With inks and all that stuff, yeah. oh my god, it was so we needed, you know, uh, to to get more of, of the stuff that we use, like the you know, sprays, inks, or whatever. And they were they're like sold out because we usually get like a gallon of stuff, you know, big portions because you know we just because we print a lot. And man, the shortage is just killing us. Uh, so to, we had to literally go out of our way to try to find somebody who who's still supplying them right now because everybody is you know a lot of companies are just they just don't have the. And the your inventory. business will be down. Yeah. Like, your business will <laughs> yeah. be so down. So I can't imagine <laughs> what the even bigger uh, printers are, what they're going through, you know? Yeah. Uh, it kind of affects everybody. And we're pretty consistent. So, like, we're always about consist like being consistent. And, like, yeah. we're always dropping stuff. So, like, we got to make sure that we have all the, the, the inks that we need, all the supplies that we need to do these drops. Now, does that... Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say. Um, does that affect, like, your... Uh, your design process too, like maybe you limit how much ink you're using on certain designs I'm right sure now. Sure, it can. You know, if we really have like a, a problem where we just can't get nothing, we're like, well, what are we gonna do now? You yeah. Know? So because I mean that shirt right there, that probably yeah. uses a good amount of ink, right? The if hoodie? we do a big run like we normally do, yeah, it'll it'll be. We use a lot. Run yeah, so we'll, we'll run into a problem if we run out. Then all of a sudden we try to order more and then there's nothing. We're gonna be like, all right, what do we do now? Or sometimes we got a limit on the colors that they do have in stock. So like, oh, they have this color in stock. Let's try to think of a design for this color. Yeah, or, you know, like yeah. So it, I guess it does limit us, 
But uh, we always try to find a way to work around it, you know. If we have to mix colors, you know, I go and look up what colors mix with what. And I try, if I need a brown, we don't have brown, you know. <laughs> You're like sweating, putting the color. <laughs> Shit. We're because doing you custom can't. shirts this month. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't mess that up either. It's like a you. mystery shirt. <laughs> No, it's, it changed from blue to turquoise. It's going to be turquoise now. <laughs> yeah, because uh, ink's expensive too, right? Yeah. I would think so, right? Because, I mean, computer, I'm, all I know is like computer ink. And I know computer ink, like for like a little bit of this, <laughs> yeah. is like super 40 expensive. 40 bucks, it's right? Like 40 there. bucks. And I'm like, you're not yeah. printing in color at all. So I'm assuming, like, did you see like a surge or a spike in, in prices because of? With, like inflation stuff going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it actually went up 30%. <laughs> that's is, a, it, it's a lot. Yeah, that's a People think like 30%. <laughs> it should be 3%. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 30% is like, do we want to be doing this anymore? Like, I don't know. No, yeah. yeah. The, the, the clothing industry, like anything in printing, screen printing. Um, Even like, blank, blanks? Like everything. Well, everything in the clo- I mean, every. I think every industry has gone up. Yes. Just okay. because of the shortage on everything, you know? And like you, that's why you see prices going up on everything. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we did have to like price our stuff a little bit higher. Um, I, I, I personally think that what we price our stuff at is like a reasonable price. Yeah. Yes. We price everything on like how much production costs, so we don't really price on like, oh, I think this is gonna be a hundred dollars. We're like, okay, this costs this much, so we should charge this much. Yeah, you're you're being uh, reasonable and considerate with your profit. Right, right. Considering the the amount that the cost of labor or whatever it is and everything like yeah, that. Right, right. That's the whole thing too is you guys are running a business with just it's just you two, right? Yeah, it's us two. Like we're the main owners, but we do have two other people that are, have been helping us out and yeah. Kyle Jackson and Uli Tellis. Uh Uli Tellis actually helps out with marketing and uh, Kyle just also helps out with marketing. Yeah. And he, he also helps out with the creative side too as well. Yeah. We do work with other uh, graphic designers that help us make designs. Um, we, we don't make 100% of our designs. Like, we probably make, what, 60% of our designs. I do, we do give, like, what, everyone an opportunity to... Yeah. There, there's people that DM us or show us their portfolio, and we do buy designs from them. Or Now, don't. when you guys make designs, though, are you guys doing, like, the the actual, like, drawing of it and and creating the PDF versions of it and then printing them? Or do you send them out to individuals that know how to use those programs? And So, well, I do most of the designing when, yeah. it, when it does come down, down to designing. But uh, if there's times where, like, you know, I won't have time because I got other things to do, where I'll reach out to another graphic designer and, you know, I'll tell them my concept, what I want, yeah. and they'll, like, make it for me. And it's probably nice if you you find like a good network of people that you oh, know no, yeah. Oh, yeah. and you're like, oh, I can go to him and know I could just say like, I need this, this and that. Right, right. And they make the design. Oh, yeah. and, and we work with a ton of people. Like, I think, I think, I think we've worked with about six graphic designers. Yeah. And there's some that own their own brand. We all help each other out. We help them with printing. They help us with designs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. We have our own graphic designer for a lot of the stuff that we have. Hyman. man. Um, I mean, that's been like a. A clutch thing to have oh, in the no, background, yeah. like someone that's it knows those programs and such like that. Yeah, it's very time consuming. So yeah, yeah it is to to learn it because yeah, then yeah. you're learning like a whole oh, nother program whole in order world. how to do it. Yeah, it is a whole other world. Um, it's, it's, uh, Sab, I know you have some. I seen you post. So you have some questions. Oh yeah, I mean, just kind of like you know, when you start working on a, a say a, a approach a piece, you know, are you starting first with like, okay, we need to come up with a new crew neck or. Are you coming up with the the idea, the concept first? Like, what what kind of sparks the next collection for you guys? You know. So, um, I mean, pretty much, like I said before, I mean, it's kind of random. Like, there'll be days where you know I'll be I don't know, like driving, and uh-huh. I'll think of an idea, <clears throat> and like I'll share the idea with Alex and other people, mm-hmm. and uh, we would just go off that. Like, so I would be like, this is. A, Shit, I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, basically, I would say like, I would get inspired by like, I don't know. I'll be like I said, I'll be driving. I get inspired by something, and then I'll be like, this would be a really cool idea for a crew neck. This would be a really cool idea like for a hoodie yeah. or a shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we just go off from there. We'll make the first design, and if we want to make a collection out of it, we'll just get inspired by the first design and, and grow off that. Right. Sometimes we do like single drops where we only drop one, two. Three shirts, but yeah. um, that's just because I had a good idea for that shirt, yeah, or an idea for that hoodie, and we'll just drop, we'll do a single drop. Now, how often are you doing like collections? 
So we did take a break from collections just because we had like, I mean, there, oh, there was a shortage on things. So it was kind of hard to get, you know, uh, a whole collection done. Um, I would say every other month we would drop a collection. Yeah. yeah. And how often are the drops in general though? Like aside from collections, just one-off drops, like how often are those? We try to do one every, at least every two weeks. Mm. There's times where we do one every week, but lately we've been doing one every two weeks. We try to be consistent. You know, we, you know, like we always have ideas. We always have designs already made. Uh, like for example, like we've already worked on the December collection. Yeah. And uh, we're just getting production done for that. We're about to drop a fall collection. Actually, what is it? November eighteenth. Mm. What it's like in two weeks. Okay. Like, yeah. So we always try to be ahead of schedule, man. Because if we try to do everything last second, it, if anything can go wrong, pushes us back. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you got to push back a date and. So we would try to be a couple months ahead for sure. If anything, we're a little behind on drops. <laughs> be, and with even being ahead, like it's just... Right, right, yeah, right. Even like, with you think you're being ahead, it's still a little bit behind. Right, like there's times where I just feel like, you know what, I don't want to drop this yet. Like we have everything made. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I just like I just feel like we got to hype it up more. We got to like show it off more. Yeah. Like I want to put it out there a certain way. So if I feel like it's not the right time, we won't drop it. Yeah, because you don't want it shelved. You're right. I don't want right. it shelved either. But yeah. at the same time... I don't want to just drop something just to drop it. Like, you know, yeah. I, I want to put it out there in, in a good, in a cool way, you know, like in a creative way. And sometimes I feel like if it's not the right time, then it's not the right time. Now, have you noticed um, the growth from even the early Albrachi days to now? Like, can you speak on that? Because I, I know obviously we've known you guys for quite some time, but you guys are talking about like drops and, and being, you know, like it, things happening every, every two weeks or something. That's obviously because you know that people are expecting it. You're also knowing that it is going to, you know, do well. You're, you're expecting certain numbers. Now you're going off of different numbers compared to what you had in the beginning. So I know in the beginning that you're probably were looking at what you're doing. If you, if you were able to kind of like see in the future and see what you're doing now, you'd be like, damn, that's where we want to be. Right. So can you speak on like, how has, how has it changed? Like what was those moments in where you were like, this is, all right, now we're on to something. Like the gears are moving right. and whether we're holding on to the steering wheel or not, like this shit is moving without us. <laughs> You want to speak of well, that was, Honestly, we started seeing a big change as soon as we changed the name and we did the first drop. We sold out. We're like, whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we even oversold. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, like what, what is, what is like, going on? Like back on? then, we, we wouldn't even like keep track of inventory because like we wouldn't, we would never sell out. But I remember the first drop when we changed our name, we oversold and I was like, shit. Hey, Alex, we got to print more. I, I didn't want to cancel the orders, you know? Yeah. It was our first draft, so I was like, and we did, we printed more. Uh, I did see a huge change just because, like, I feel like people saw the new vision. Like, people noticed what we were doing, mm -hmm. and people saw the new vision, the better vision, and I felt like we knew what we were doing now, and I feel like the people, like, our audience was, like, watching, and they saw that we were, like, you know, right. we, we had learned, and we just had a better vision for the brand. Yeah, and you're like what? What almost putting yourself in their shoes of like what would I want to see from a brochi? Like you exactly, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you know th that's why we changed the name because we're like we started putting our because at first we were just like looking at the brand from our point of view, but then we were like we 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 got to look at the point of our customers and our supporters, you know, and uh, we just felt like. We weren't doing uh, good, good enough, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably nice too that you get you got really excited about that name change. Oh yeah, and you got really excited about the rebranding and I, that it it hit like oh, it hit. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, we had a good feeling about it, so yeah, like we had a good feeling about it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, but it was still kind of nerve wracking because it's, it's you know you still have thoughts in the back of your head like all right. If this doesn't work out the way we wanted to, what what do we do now? You know, we going back so. to Albrachi. <laughs> you know, right, just right. change thank, it back. Thank God, man, everything just w worked out so smoothly, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like honestly, like I say, even from like people up that we know you, and also from people that just kind of like are are watching what you're doing from afar, like we do see the progress. Now that's why we've been trying to get you on the damn podcast yeah. for the longest time because we we got to see right. how you guys are doing. Like even it it's it suits. I guess the suit fits you better, if that makes sense. No, like yeah, you guys I, I are wearing it well. Right, right. Like back then, like, like we actually we're we're proud of wearing for Guy and Angel now. Back then we would just wear it, and like, I felt like there was something missing, and but whatever what was missing, like I feel like we have like put it together, and 
we don't feel like we don't feel like we don't we don't have that same feeling anymore. Yeah. yeah. And you guys grew like together because you guys easily like I mean, I, I don't mean to drift off. but oh, You no, guys no. could have just been like, all right, deuces. We'll use the same area, but we'll like split and do different names. Yeah. But you're like, OK, let's just rebrand. Yeah, we, we got it. Serious talks. We sat down. We're like, we got We got to get our stuff together. Man. Like we just knew that. <laughs> Like, I mean, I've known, like I said, I've known him since high school. So, like, we just knew that we we're perfect partners. Like, it was just, like, um, when, we, when we met each other, the reason why we met each other was because throughout the whole high school, we always had a class together. The reason why we had the same class together is because we were always in support classes. So, like... <laughs> we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, it's a, you know, funny story, but uh, we are always in support classes. And, uh, you know, like, he would always be there you know like so i would just talk to him and he would talk to me and i I felt like we we both grew up feeling the same way yeah yeah yeah. same situation so yeah then the connection was i don't know it's just natural yeah Yeah. and how did what was the initiation as far as like you guys want to do a brand or like Honestly. What you guys, was it like super bad? Were you like drawing, <laughs> not dicks, but you know, you're drawing like t shirts and shit. And he's like, yo, I like that. Let's yeah, do right. this. So he was. <laughs> <laughs> super bad <laughs> reference is probably not good, but you get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. We're a little bit tipsy that day, yeah. man. We're, you were young guys, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And, no, uh, <laughs> we were just in the basement and we were bored. Like, we, we wouldn't do shit, bro. Like, we would just sit down, listen to music, not doing nothing. You know, we we're bored. And we're just like, one day we're just like, literally one day we're just like, what if we, we started a brand? And I'm like, yeah, fuck it, why not? You know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. It was just like, man, we should do something. Like, really? Like, what? I don't know, man. We should just do something cool, you know? Like, I forgot who, who's, who's the one that said it, but yeah, somebody know. said it. And we're like, yeah, you're right. What could we do? And then we started coming up with all these ideas. And then one of them was, was like the brand. And then right there we started just... Drew a sketch of a shirt, started doing designs. We didn't. We were just, you know, Cause yeah. We, being we had no idea how to even use programs. We didn't have an idea like how to make a shirt, how to even make anything. In our in our head, it was it was so easy. Oh, this is gonna be so dope, man! We're gonna make so much money. This and that. And you like, see the machine, you're like, that shit costs how much? <laughs> you're like what? <laughs> I was like, Alex, I only got twenty dollars in my bank account right now. <laughs> no, but. That's when we realized we had to get a full time job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, because your your even your parents had to be supportive of it too. I mean, coming from like high school, you guys yeah. were like, we're gonna move but this big ass just, like machinery yeah. in here, and it was really confusing to them because they're like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, I come You're from a, do what? I, I took all my white shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I came from a you know traditional Mexican family, so like when I had the idea, like I actually asked my mom to borrow what was it like two thousand dollars. I think it was like $2,000. She looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> She's for like, what? I, I, I told her the reason, and she was like, no way. Like, that sounds stupid. And I don't blame her, you know? Like, back in the day, I didn't make the smart choices. Yeah. I, you know, so. But but do they see, like, oh, okay. Now, yeah. 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 Now it's nice, now, huh? Like, it's even for you guys, it's like a good sense of satisfaction, because you're like, all right, like, I, I, now you guys, right, right. You, but you also, I believe you probably have grown into, like, more mature morale and, mm-hmm. and more mature, like, thoughts and shit. So you kind of, like, you showed them, okay, yeah. they're, they're really down there doing stuff, or they're really yeah. out there, like, right, right. legitimately trying yeah. to push this. All right. Yeah, like, then, after that, they, they did see that. Yeah, cause especially uh, nobody really gave us, like, the handout to go and buy the stuff that we needed, so... Um, we had to go out of our way and, and get, you know, we're like 18 or whatever, and we had to go, you know, put in that work at yeah. like Pizza Hut or something, you know, yeah. and, and try to get as much money as we can to, um, you know, get all the equipment that we need. And But I'm actually glad for that because I'm if so it wasn't for, for that, that yeah. like, we would have gave up so easily because we did go through so much shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, if, if we were just handed the money and, and bought the machines, we would have gave up so easily. Yeah. But, like, since we knew we worked hard for this shit, like, we we're like, dude, that's actually what we, we we were saying. Like, all this stuff that we did to get here and it's not working, like, there's no way we could just quit. Yeah. Like, we just yeah. Gotta, we're too far in. Yeah, yeah. we're too yeah. far in. We're too deep. We already, like, I, it, it was crazy. Like, you know, uh, not to sound too personal, but we we're $20,000 in debt. Yeah. And we we're like, dude, like, we can't just give up. Yeah. You know? Like, but you hear those stories. That's the whole thing. Like you guys are, you guys started as like a goal, and you've had to hit that valley to be able to hit the peak and be like, okay. Like that's why I'm saying, like when I seen you guys hit the the name change and it hit, 
right. like it did well. There's like that sense of like, all right, like yeah. Yeah. it's, it's, it's like pain. A little bit of <laughs> yeah. weight just comes off yeah, slowly, you know. Yeah, to turn it around too. Yeah. No, like, yeah. people are in debt and they're not doing shit with their life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are, like, legit doing a dream. Like, you get yeah. that? Like, it's, no. it, means a, it yeah. means a lot to see progress. But if, also, if you didn't go through all that stuff, you never would have made those changes. Yeah. Like, that put the pressure on you to be like, fuck, we got to make something. Yeah. We got to make this work. Right, right. You know? So that's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes failure is actually a huge help. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I always tell it to people, like, you know what? If you're going to try something... Even if you fail, like that might help you. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I mean, everybody likes an undefeated fighter, but oh, the first right, time right. they lost, you get right. to see like who they really are. Right, right, right. And when you finally suffer your first defeat, yeah. or many, and you come back and you're like, Yeah, we were backed oh. in the corner, man. You know, we had, a, we had, a, we had to fight through it, man. We had to, <laughs> yeah. we had to really figure it out, man. Yeah, it was, you know, some emotions are running. You're then money's tight or whatever. You need new equipment still. You're like, what the hell do we do, man? Yeah. Like, and then the drop, sometimes they're like, all right, I guess we got to put in the drop. Yeah, because you're just, now you got to put more, more money into that. Yeah. You know, so. And you got to put emotion into it, too. Like, Literally. sometimes you're faking the funk. I mean, everybody does it. It's yeah. not like a, like some oh, random no, thing. Yeah. You're faking the funk, like, to try to get people to still, you have to put the facade on. Like, mm-hmm. now, obviously, being successful, it's like, okay, no, this is really genuinely, like, we're, we're like, uh, 100% behind it. Yeah. But there's probably some times where you're down and out, oh, no, yeah. and you're like... Shit, and but then you go on your phone. And you're like, I'm so excited for this. Right? <laughs> I'm so excited for everything. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it, we you know. You gotta be though. Like you, you, have you have to put yourself in that position. Like you already got it. And I don't think that's necessarily faking the funk, but that's just like psyching your mind out of like, I may not have it right now or not have the things that I need, but I'm gonna believe that I have it. And so when I got it, it doesn't feel brand new. I'm already there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh no, yeah, I, you, I agree. You have to put so much confidence in yourself when no one. Is has any I mean, confidence in you? I mean, yeah. nobody's gonna have confidence in you in the beginning. Nobody no. is. No, like you gotta be, you gotta be confident to yourself. You gotta be your your number one supporter. Yeah, because yep. no one is gonna support you in the beginning. Nobody yep. is. That's just usually how it is. Yeah. Um, I want to go kind of jump into the videos because I don't want to get too far off of that. Now, you sent me videos. Sab's so gonna pull them up on Drive, and I, I really want to kind of go over the process because, like I said, we we've talked about the history of it. We talked about like where things are going and and how you guys have been successful but there's certain things i think even going to the tags like one of the things i I like about uh the brand itself this was something even in the beginning i'm pretty sure you guys had to make that step where like you're not printing on a shirt that has something some other kind of basic brand tag you're like okay that's like a that to me when i see shirts with that that they have their own tags yeah i was like okay that's a that's a step of like it's like you're doing the right thing. Like you're putting that little bit of extra touch on right. it, yeah. you know, because you could print your logo on the shirt, but then when you actually put the tag or you print it, like that's yeah. the, that right there is that you guys are, one, you're learning how to do that. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah. like one of you guys is like legitimately my grandma, like just sitting there <laughs> <laughs> sewing shit together. Be- believe it or not, that was a lot harder to learn than screen printing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Because that's tags all the way on the, the <laughs> shoulder and shit. Like, <laughs> fuck. Because <laughs> that's, that's like, that's extremely mechanical. Yeah. Like, right. That's an old fashioned way that it, like if it's not broke, don't fix it. Like right, people right. still use that same way of putting things together is the sewing machines. Right. So... Can you talk about that? Like, how do you, um, what made you want to make this step of putting your own tags on there? Because this is one, and then there's another one where you're actually printing right. the tag on it too as well. So the whole reasoning why we, we chose to do uh, sew on tags and, uh, and not printing tags is on the high quality stuff. So <clears throat> we actually, over the years, we, um, we started upgrading our products, our quality. I mean, we've always had good quality products, but uh, we're always trying to upgrade our quality. And we just felt like, you know, high quality pieces deserve a, a sew on tag. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we didn't even know how to sew. I mean, Alex, you know, we, we, we just went to Michael's and we we're like, you know what? Let's buy the sewing machine. We have no idea how to use it, but uh, Alex actually like YouTubed it and we actually learned how to sew. And so basically, every piece that has a high, that sew on tag, it's like a really high quality piece. From what I mean by high quality is like, uh, the the cotton of the actual garment, which is in that video, the the zip up, yeah, is a very high quality cotton, and it actually feels nice. It's heavyweight, yeah. and uh, obviously it's gonna cost more for us to uh, produce. So, 
So that's like a little bit more of like an incentive for people that when they buy that, they're buying the tags, they're buying certain, right. it's maybe just, certain, uh, you know, the, the zipper itself is probably even higher quality too with the cotton. It's not just the garment itself. It's like you don't want your zipper breaking too on right, like a yeah, high end yeah. thing. And like even it goes to the rhinestones. The rhinestones are very high quality. We use, you know, we, we want to make sure that we, you know, everything that we put out there, we want to make sure everything's high quality. Now, what is this right here? You, you're, this is already you... That's a heat press right there? Yes. So you've already put the heat press on it, and then you're just kind of like making sure that it's fully on there, and then you're, yeah. you're ripping off the film. Yep, pretty much, yeah. So basically what it is is uh, that's actually a screen print with a rhinestone. Screen print is like literally the, the orange and the white. Okay. That's the actual print that's already in the fabric. So we actually screen printed the hoodies first. This is a hoodie that you guys are looking at right we now. Have the, I think we have the, the video of the print too as well, the orange and then the white. Right? There's an orange and a white print. Oh, yeah, yeah. There should be a video of that. Yeah. So, um, oh, it's right there. Yeah. So right now, this is putting this is, on the actual screen printing, the orange. Right. And then you already have the stencil, I guess it is, of the rhinestones that's right. going to go exactly where it needs to go. Right. So, like, as uh, I mentioned earlier, we have a manufacturer in China that uh, we send the designs to. And they actually make the transfers, like... They basically put the design in stones already, like, perfectly. Like, we give them the measurements, and they have they have it done perfectly. So so after he's done printing this hoodie, or, I mean, this long sleeve, I'm sorry, uh, then we go over and put, put the put rhinestones that. over. So that was, like, this per, is, on the money. Yeah, right. So, th like, this is why, the, um, so for this, you need to have measurements perfect. Like, if... They need to be on the dot. So our manufacturers have to make sure that they're making these stuff like on the dot. We give them measurements, like exact measurements, and they have to uh, make those measurements come to life. So now, right here, you already did the screen, the screen print of the, the white of Forgotten Angel, <clears throat> and then you're, you're heat pressing the, the rhinestones. Yeah. And this is where you said like there's so many different, there's so many different colors, too, as well, with the rhinestones, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's a colorful one. I think there's another video of him actually peeling the the rhinestones. This oh, one that one's the, the size that, tag. That, that one too. Tag. Like, what are you what are you doing with that? With the the heat. So that he's actually uh, that, that's called a heat gun. Um, he's actually t making sure that the temperature is right on that machine, because all of our inks, in order for them to dry, they have to use high ink, uh, high heat. I forget what the. I usually. Um, Around three, when I get to like three thirty or something like that, that's when I know I'm like, okay, I'm good. Because the heat, when you put it under there, it shows on the thing. It you guys are doing up. like quality uh, inspections uh, and shit. Oh, you guys yeah. have better quality inspections <laughs> than half the jobs I work. <laughs> 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 He's like, the humidity in here is <laughs> below sixty. Especially when I just start the machine, it takes a while to cook up, and I yeah. want to make sure that it's it's gonna it's gonna hit the temperature that I need it. Now, to. do you have like a bucket of shirts? You probably just kind of like test shirts. Test shirts. Yeah. I'm assuming I was like, I got there's whole, gotta got be a whole thing of them. Man. Yeah, where you're just like, okay, let me just kind of get a few runs in this, yeah. and then we know it's it's actually working. Oh no, yeah, we had to do runs. And this is that same shirt, but you're just putting the the. He's actually putting the print. The print on the, the for size, the tag. The yeah. size tag, yeah. Damn. Yeah. After he prints it. Um, you know, he puts it under that machine because, like I said, that ink does not dry without uh, it being 320, what is it, Fahrenheit? Yeah, three, yeah, 320 Fahrenheit. So if you just leave it without heating it, it just will... It won't. It won't, it won't dry. Yeah. yeah so no? like, it would just smear on someone's... <laughs> like if someone puts that hoodie on, it would just smear on their shirt. Or mm -hmm. it would just wash off. Well, it won't wash off completely, but it just wouldn't stay. Now, how have you noticed the, the, have you changed inks? Have you changed certain things that, that you notice? Like, okay. Upgrade it to like better quality? Yeah, because you, yeah. you got to think like there's certain shirts that I've, but not with your guys, but like ones you buy from maybe like concerts or something like that, that it just falls apart. Right. Yeah, it has to do a lot with, with the inks, but it also has to do with how you finalize a product with making sure temperatures are good and everything like that. Because you can have the best ink in the world, but whoever's printing it is not doing the rest of the process right, you might as well have the worst ink in the world. Yeah. You know, so that's and that's why I'm you're doing, like, the heat checks. Yeah, that's why so you're doing I, so certain I things. check everything. Cause it, it, I mean, it's a nightmare if somebody, like, say, calls you or something, and, oh, my print fell off. So, like, you're like, what the? You know, it's embarrassing. Yeah. So you, you don't want that to happen. <laughs> so you've yeah. got to so, make like, sure. The, the process is very important. Everything has to be so, like, precise. And, like, 
temperatures have to be right. Um, like everything has to be at exact numbers, temperature, time. Like you can't leave it there too long because you could over, like we call it cured. When the ink is dried, we call it cured. And like if it's too cured, it could wash off. Everything has like time, from time and um, heat or temperature, everything needs to be precise. And that's gotta be something too is like, not just with the print, when you guys choose to do rhinestones, that's like another, with my anxiety dude, like Sab knows I have horrible anxiety. Like I'd honestly be always thinking like, someone's gonna get this hat and some shit's gonna fall off. Like I, I, I go through that all the time. <laughs> and it's, Even it, though I know like it's good, but it's just that thought in the back of your head. You know, yeah. because the anxiety it, part of it. Because it's something overthinking, you know? that's like, it's... It's not printed within yeah. the fabric, like it's it's on it. Yeah. So it has the exposure of like the elements of yeah. you know weather and all and, and all this kind of stuff. People just tossing it around like the and consumer. And if, if we ever do something new, we usually test it. We throw it in the washer or something like that to make sure. Do you have like a? You probably have like a standard. Like it's got to be worn like sixteen hours, and it's got to be thrown around the back seat <laughs> a, <laughs> a certain amount of time. Like yeah, yeah, so, yeah. because I mean, you think about it like that when you like you could throw your shirt in the back back of a car, or whatever. But with the the rhinestones and stuff like if once it starts getting hit that's damage yeah right. it's the same thing as like certain fabrics or shoes and stuff like mm -hmm. you're constantly thinking i'm assuming that goes into designs too yeah. all right you guys are constantly thinking of like okay if we use this type of material this type of fabric this type of garment like yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah that, yeah so like if like we're going to be doing rhinestones we're like we could do these type of designs if yeah. we're doing print we could do these type of designs you yeah know what i mean so like yeah we're, we're always taking into consideration like everything like what we're going to be using, what materials we're going to be using, what we're going to print it on, what, or, you know what I'm saying? Like Now, the only element out of what you guys are doing is producing your own garments, right? right? So we produce about, like, what, 60 to 70% of our stuff. We do have manufacturers in Pakistan and China that have been making some of our, our products. And it's more so not for the printing, but just because, like, we are starting to get into, like, cut and sew, which cut and sew is, like, we're trying to get the shirts and hoodies made from scratch. Well, that's what I mean. That's actually what I meant is like that. Okay. that's the only element that you guys don't have as of right now. You guys right. are not like legitimately sewing no. the shirts no, yeah, from right. scratch, like getting the fabrics within, you know, rolls and oh, then no, making yeah. them. Oh, yeah. That's the only that's difference. The, but that's what you guys are kind of going to next. Oh, yeah. 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 Eventually we do want to get to that next. But it's yeah. just a whole other world and like something else we got to learn and uh we do have some type of sense of it, but it is a whole other world. Because it does, it does factor in a dramatic shift in like turnaround. Oh, because yeah. you have to produce, like, you can buy, f you know, five hundred shirts of this quality, and you can get them in at a certain time. But then when you say like, I have to make five hundred shirts, yeah. and yeah. then I have to print yeah, right. on those five hundred shirts, it's gonna take a lot longer. Yeah, and especially with you know we're still a small brand, so like, well, we got like four people max working with us. So yeah. We wouldn't be able to get stuff done, at, you know, right away. Yeah. Now with this uh, collection you got coming up in, you said about two weeks, like what's, uh, I don't know if you dropped already some of the designs, like what are some things that people can expect from that? Okay, so yeah, for, the, for this new collection, we, I have been showing sneak peeks on the stories. Uh -huh. You know, if, if any, any of you guys follow us, uh, uh, one of the big things that we're dropping is our cargo pants. Those are actually made from scratch. That's called a cut and sew piece. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one of the, we haven't, we haven't dropped anything like that before. Uh, another thing we're, we're going to be doing is, um, a long sleeve with like rhinestone on the sleeves. Uh, with th that long sleeve that was actually just playing right now. Yeah. That's, that was the front of it. And, uh. Oh, so that's like a sneak peek too. That's a sneak peek. Okay, we, cool. actually, we actually went crazy with it. Like the sleeves are going to have rhinestone. We, we went above and beyond with that. And, uh, you know, j like everything on that collection is gonna be pretty crazy. Now, how many pieces are in the in the actual collection itself? There's gonna be about six pieces. Oh shit, that's a pretty yeah. that's a pretty significant drop then. Yeah. So now, do you drop it all together, or you drop like this is the one piece from it, and then this is the next piece from it, and then this is the like right. do you do like so like singles like so, yeah. like you're a rapper? You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're actually gonna drop everything all together. Okay. We're actually gonna include a seven dollar tee as well. Okay. Which I mean, like. The seven, the cool thing about seven dollar tees, anyone could afford it. Yeah, you know, it's it's just something. I'm fun. rocking one right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> but uh, it's just something that you know everyone could have. It's a piece that everyone could have, and yeah, 
it, it brings good awareness to the page as well too. You know what I mean? Because right. then it just kind of fun. Not saying that that's a marketing tool, but it funnels people in to check out your other shit as well. Oh no, yeah, t- definitely. And it's just something like you know, I understand. You know, there's people that don't have the money to buy a piece of the collection. We do have a young audience. Yeah. So you know, we always keep that in mind, and you know, we want to make sure that everyone's you know feels a part of this drop and like anyone like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be a little easier for everyone to get, you know, a piece from this drop. Yeah. yeah it's like your MJ and Shaq. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we got the MJ collection. We got you on the Shaq. Right, you know what right, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing, too, is that um, I don't know if you remember, but we, we because we, with everything that was going on, we kind of put it on pause, but we had the shirt design that we were going to do for uh, suicide prevention. Oh, right. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. and we had that, so we're still going to do that, okay. mm-hmm. but... I remember drawing it, and I, I just I, there's something with that that I just never let it go because I remember drawing the design of it. It's, me and Sad were working on something where we we're like, okay, we want to have something with like meaning as far as merch, um, you know, whether it's charitable, whatever it is. And I remember drawing that, and then you said, "Oh, this is ironic because it's like you have a buddy that draw like was doing the exact same design, and it flowed so well together." We sent him this, the sketches, he print, he he designed it, so the shirt looks really dope. Right. We just we had a video for it too as well, so I think that's something that like I, we worked with you in the past on, and right. I was I'm like really still excited about that. I mean, you remember that, right? Yes. Yeah, course. I remember that. Yeah, because yeah. I remember you had drawn something, and uh, I was like, oh, my buddy actually has like a similar style to what you guys are trying to go for. Yeah. And I had showed him. He was like, oh yeah, like I'll do it. And he actually did it for you guys. Yeah. yeah. What was uh, what was his name again? Oh, uh, Fez. Fez. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I want to I want to put that in his page on there. Yeah, too he's as actually well. Fez. Is actually, the the one that made our first piece of forgotten angel when we did the name change mm-hmm. he actually helped us out come out with the first design that, that was something that was like I, I remember you showing me this page and i was like bro this is like meant to be the shirt's like legitimately meant to be yeah, like right, happen yeah. like remember, all the stars like, aligned i was like that's there's no way i drew this and then the whole check on them um was like the front and then and it just like perfectly went well with what he was doing too as well right, so right. i want to make sure that he gets he gets good credit for it too as well. If it, when it drops, is that he he has like some sort of recognition too as oh, well. No, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's, he's a real cool guy. He's you know he's very talented. He's a so very, he's one of your graphic designers. Oh, uh, he's actually designed like uh, I believe like three pieces. Yeah. For, for our brand. Yeah. He's he's one of the. Oh, go ahead. Who's been working on this one with you guys? Uh, this one I actually I I designed that one. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I designed that whole collection myself. Damn, so this is a big one. Yeah, this is a big one. Yeah. I'm excited to see the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, it's just little sneaks. <laughs> right. I think the last big drop that we did, the last collection we did was in, back in July. Yeah. But uh, we were actually supposed to drop this in the, the beginning of November, but with production, the cargoes, we actually got manufactured in China, and production actually got backed up because of shipping, and um, they didn't have enough employees. But... Uh, we were just waiting for everything to come in. Now we're just, you know, uh, making sure we got everything ready. Because one thing that uh, we like to do is um, we like to ha- have everything ready to ship. So as soon as orders come in, we, we try to ship everything the next day. So you usually have an estimate uh, amount that's already printed, ready to go. Right, yeah. And there's, oh. yeah, we, we usually pre-make everything and we ship it right away. Because I do know people like to get their stuff right away and... You know, that's one thing, since we're able to, like, pro- like you know, produce everything in-house, we're able to push out everything a lot faster than other brands. Yeah. And because you're doing all the ship, like, you're heading to the post office and dropping that off. Oh, and- yeah. We do everything from start to finish. We're yeah. faster than Amazon Prime, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where you live, I'm there in five yeah. right now. <laughs> no care. For you. Um, you guys were talking about before that you, you find a lot of... Um, um, assistance in, in building your brand through influencers mm-hmm. and I've even seen it too sometimes I'll like I didn't even have no idea that they were like Chicago artists or certain artists whether they'll be on your uh, for you page and I'll look at them and then I'll go through their page and I'll see like forgot names what the fuck are they wear on that shirt for <laughs> <laughs> or they're on stage and I see it especially with the rhinestones like I think that's something that's kind of like significant with your brand right now oh, so yeah. I'll start seeing yeah. it and I think because I mean it hit so well because I think artists right now too are kind of in that stage where it's it, they like that extra pop oh, yeah. in their gear. <laughs> oh no, yeah. Um, so I, it, can you speak on that too? Is that you've you've found uh, success as a brand? It kind of goes without saying, but that you 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 know you send uh, certain uh, influencers or, or artists, and how has that you know helped your your brand grow? 
Yeah, so um, there's actually some influencers that reach out to us and like our, they like our stuff, and they're and then for exchange we send them something, and they for exchange they make a post or do a review on our products, and mm-hmm. uh, they just tag us, and we get you know that's how we've been growing our brand, uh, just through influencers, artists. It's like you know when an artist goes and performs with our stuff, like. Hundreds of people are like watching them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if especially if it has rhinestone, they're gonna be looking at it like, "Well, oh, what is that?" You know, they're gonna do uh, research and try to find it. There, I mean, there is artists that actually buy our stuff and wear it in their music videos, and you know, they'll send it to us. They're like, "Oh, I just bought this hoodie and I just dropped this music video," and in that music video, they'll be wearing our hoodie and yeah. our shirt, whatever it is. So it's like, I think it's pretty cool that. Um, People are choosing to like buy our products mm-hmm. or ask for a product for their music video, or like I was actually telling recently, I was actually just at the Don Tolliver concert, yeah, and I, I saw like three people wearing our sh- our shit, that's and true. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like people, I went up to one of the guys and he was like, yeah, I literally bought this outfit to wear at this concert, you know, yeah. like yeah, I, I just think it's amazing that people are like actually choosing our our like clothing f- for like a special day, yeah. You know, so it's cool because it's like you're also moving in silent through a crowd, and you're like, "Oh, he's wearing my yeah, shit. Right, right. He's wearing my <laughs> right, right. shit. She's wearing my." So that's a that's a really right, dope right, feeling. Right, right. It, it is a dope feeling seeing it. I love seeing people wearing our stuff. You know, it, it actually means a lot to us. Mm-hmm. And like, like I said, you know, like it means a lot when they choose our clothing to wear on a special day. Yeah. And yeah. So. I mean, like I said, I think that the rhinestones is a big thing. Oh, no, yeah. The change of it too. I see a dramatic shift in like there's there's more to it. It wasn't just like okay, we're gonna print our name and like a little little bit of a design. It, it there's more like you like you know what when you buy certain shirts, especially from like artists. Like sometimes I will listen to certain podcasts or like certain uh, artists, and they'll just have just their their name right, on right. it and they'll sell it for like f- like 50 bucks and you're like man that's just like one i could do that <laughs> at kinko's or something like that right, right. but like you guys with your with your your even with your price tags even if it's like a higher end price tag price right. tag or something like that there's so much design right. on the shirt that you feel like oh i get something from every angle like no right. sleeves yeah. like even for this one that's why i think like we are, we're excited about it is because with this december drop there's there's so much going on at different angles that it's like the perfect photo opportunity too. Right, and that's one thing with with our brand is like we want to make sure you know every every piece that we drop we put a lot of thought into it. Um, like I know you know you know people might not think about it, but we do put a lot of thought into every single design design and even from production. You know we try to like I said before. We try to go above and beyond, push limits that, you know, no one has done or it's hard to get done. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll try to get it done. Um, I'm always coming up with the ideas and he's always like helping me figure out how to come, like how to make it to life. Yeah, the production side, you know. So, so I, we got a tag team. Yeah, that's where we tag team. Like I come up with a crazy idea or I get inspired by something and he helps me uh, make it, you know, come to life. Yeah. yeah. Can you speak on what is your, and I'm, I have, probably have to have you, like, if I don't got pictures of it, I need you to send me. What is your favorite pieces that you've ever done? That's going to be hard. But I, th- I, I think. He just stands up. He's like, <laughs> right here. <laughs> All of them. I am the piece. Yeah. For real, for real. But I would have to say my favorite pieces, and it's crazy cause that I say this, but um, the reason why I say it's crazy because I don't like to wear them personally, but I, I like the rhinestone pieces the best. Yeah. I don't know why. It just it just stands out. It's is there different. like a sp- specific one that you guys have that you're like? Um, I would I would say that the long sleeve that we're gonna be dropping is probably gonna be one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, mm. yeah. you can see like excitement by it too. Oh, no, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're like it's, you 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 designed it. Yeah, I you're designed get, it. Right? You're yeah. like you're really like this is like yeah, yeah. all and that's kind of what you guys are doing too. Is like it's it's more more in house, more in house, yeah. more right. in house. Like, what about you? I don't know. Man. I have a certain connection with uh, any piece that I get my hands on you know yeah <laughs> like from the printing you know i just have a memories with them really that's what yeah. i have like i have a memory when i when i had to go through to produce this one and that one and that one so i think i mean they kind of all have a like a spot you know right. was was there one piece because i know you're probably more involved in the printing press too, yeah. too as well is there one piece that was such a pain in the ass <laughs> to do but then when it's it like, finally oh, came oh. out <laughs> yeah he's like the whole line man when it finally came out you were like okay this one i, I I love how this came out. 
Because it's uh, trial and error. You have that, yeah. that whole stash of well, shirts. Well, this one, believe it or not, was a pain because I was using the old press. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I love the design, but we have some, some bad history together yeah. with the design and the press. I like to... that one, too, because it looks like it has like a lifted uh, print to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I like this one. I, I love it. You know? so, yeah. so the funny thing that he says that's because like we had to make a stencil for yeah. every single color, and that hoodie right there, there's a red, blue, and tan. Mm. That, that's three colors, right? Yeah. Our old press, it was so old that the like it was hard to like you had to make sure that each stencil is gonna align and land at the perfect spot. Yeah. Our our press was so old back then that like. It, the, 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 like when you're moving the machine, the, the bolts would like be loose and like <laughs> yeah. you, would, you would put down a color and it would be way off. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, 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 like the tan in this would shift. And I'm like, what the hell is going yeah. on? You know, yeah. and it would so, look terrible, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then you just throw it aside. Yeah. I like too is that you, there's certain colors, like the blue in there, even though the red's so dominant, the blue pops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think you're, you're also finding certain colors that match. Yeah. Like, is there certain. Like not just the design, but there's certain colors that you like as far as the garments themselves. Because black is always like you could put anything on black, it yeah. looks dope, right? But there might be something where you're like, okay, I kind of like this on like an army green. Like that's my that's my yeah. Personal. Well, I I kind of treat like colors differently. If I want certain stuff like for the blue, for example, I, I try to do give it like a not like a vintage effect, but like the whole cracking stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was going for. So I didn't go too crazy on the ink. And then anything else that I wanted to like, you know, be more out there, then I, I would lay more ink on it. And that's kind of how it would go based off. So like, how do I want this color to look on, on a black or like on a, on, a, on a gray or something like that? Yeah. So I had full control of all of that. And then if one, one of them, when I printed it, we looked at it, okay, this color's popping enough, whatever. And then we would just go with the flow after that. So now there's with, a lot of controlling with that. With like the, with you going back to that, it's almost like veins. Is it similar to like tattooing where like if it goes really, really thin, it's an issue. You know how like tattooing, like if you yeah. tattoo like a very, very thin line, it bleeds or yeah. something like that. Do you have that same issue with something like well, that? Like in certain detail, you mean? Well, yeah, because like in the lightning, you said like, well, you know, like how you want to make it thinner in certain yeah. areas. Does that tend to cause problems too? Um, well, he's, he's talking about like, do, do you ever have bleeding problems? Bleeding problems? Sometimes, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to specifically. Now, now I have the freedom of controlling the off contact, so... <laughs> what are you doing when you say it? He's like, I'm bleeding right now, son. <laughs> they got me yeah, outside. Because it's a thing where, like, the, the, the ink starts starts uh, oozing out, and then, like, if you want a fine line, uh, you could kind of see it, and that becomes a problem, so you kind of have to, like, like you know, clean it off and stuff. And Sometimes stuff. Yeah. if he puts too much pressure when he's screen yeah. printing... It could tend, like, when you're working with thin lines, it could tend to bleed. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, is that what I'm trying to make is an emphasis on for the audience is that they're looking at that, and they probably think it's just lightning or something. But then you you notice that, (laughs) right? It's lightning, right? I'm a (laughs) white. Because I look at it, if I'm I'm looking at it, and I've obviously, every time I look at you, I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, like, there's more... Attention yeah. to detail so, went into yeah. that. So if you're talking about technique, yeah, there is technique. There's <laughs> a lot more technique yeah. that is involved in just that little. Yeah. That is kind of like in the background of like maybe the angels are like the yeah. the forefront, but there's there's something that really went in involved in every single aspect of it too. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy because like before we got into this industry, like you know, I used to buy shirts and just be like, oh, there's a cool design. Now me and him, and we we go to the store and you know we buy shirts or whatever. We're like. Inspecting it, we're like, oh, they problem. use this technique. They use yeah. this technique. I, shit, shit. I have, I have a really big problem now. Every time I go to the store or something, I see shirts around me. I'm just looking at all the prints, feeling. Um, I'm like, and I just get caught up, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> they got eyes, eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's high as hell. Like, how, do, how do you print Everyone's this? Just and staring just at him. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, <laughs> just yeah. sniffing it. Everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming because that's how it, you know that's usually how it is. Yeah. I mean, he's probably going to like shows and being like the sounds yeah, off well, and this shit. Shut it down. Is, you, know, what, what, you know everything. Yeah. Every average, average person's like, this sounds dope. Yeah, they're all like gone. <laughs> Sab's like, I don't like none of this. <laughs> no, I'm like that now with videos too. Even when I look at my own stuff, I'm like, man, I should do this. I'm looking at this, and I'm sure you guys get that too. When you look oh, at your old shirts, you're like, I should have did it like right, this right. or. So it's cool. I like to hear. I like hearing that. Um, you know, when you when he asked you what was your favorite piece, the fact that you guys are talking about like the current collections, like that, I feel like that should always be the the common theme. That whatever you're working on or about to put out, 
that should be like what is the the best thing or the favorite thing to you. So right. to hearing that you're doing that, I'm sure people are gonna feel that and appreciate it and like, oh, I see why they say this or it, it might be the their new favorite collection too because you felt so powerful about what you're creating. Yeah, yeah and I agree with that because uh, cause, I mean, yeah, like like you know, the the more experience we have, every single piece that we drop, every new piece that we drop, we had learned something new. It's always gonna be better. Like I'm not saying our old stuff was like shitty quality. I'm just saying, like, we're always learning and trying to get the best quality. We're always trying to improve. Yeah, like, yeah. We're never going to stop, like, oh, this is, where, this is where we're at. That's it. No, we're always going to try to improve quality, you know, efficiency, everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think, like, that we can, we can even kind of understand that, too, is because when we do, like, certain podcasts, like, he's never, he didn't always have that camera. We didn't always have the studio. So like our intention, our creativity, our, our thought process into it was always 100% in the beginning. But as time goes on, your quality gets better be, just naturally because investment wise, you start getting a better quality camera. You start getting better mics. You start getting you guys, you start getting better equipment. You start understanding different techniques and how to use those techniques. So I think that's like the, the, the old stuff is not necessarily uh, lesser value it's just you just learned more Mm. and so now when you have this newer project coming out you're like oh i got all my arsenal ready like i got everything loaded locked and ready like i'm throwing everything at it that we've learned so far so i think that's why like you're like okay i'm very excited about this right right my my biggest my one thing that kind of crossed my mind is how do you feel the day after a drop or like a week after like when that buzz kind of settles or when it's like all right it's out like, are you already in the mode of, like, all right, next thing? You know oh, what I mean? No. Like, Oh, yeah. Like, there's times where I'm working at, well, we're all working on, like, two different collections at the same time. Like, just because, like, the way I feel like when we create is um, we don't want to lose. Like, let's say we have an idea for something. I think we should execute it right away because sometimes if you wait on that idea, like, you might lose feeling for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So there's times where I'm working on two different collections or two different pieces at the same time. And it's just because, like, I feel like sometimes, like, you know, there'll be times where I'll be working on something and I'll just, like, wait on it. And then later on, I'll be like, I don't know, I'm not feeling it no more. I, like, lost my vision for it. Mm-hmm. And then in order for me to stop that is, like, just, you know, if I had the vision, like, if I thought about it right there, I got to work on it right now. Just because I have the vision right now. It's fresh in my mind. Yeah. When can we expect this? This drop, you have a date on it? Yeah, I think it's going to be November. I, I pushed it back like three times. Yeah, right. <laughs> November 18th. November 18th. Yeah, oh, so it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up. Oh, shit. We were supposed to drop this November, like the beginning of November, like this week. But, um, you know, production was a lot longer. The long sleeves took a lot longer than expected. Yeah. Which, I mean, we don't have a problem with that. Like, if it takes longer, then fuck it. It takes longer. Now, when you sell them out, though, you won't ever reprint it? Um, like if you, like you know, you know you like the yeah. first drops you guys said for the new branding you said you over did it so you're able to yeah we're able meet to. the accommodation but like for some reason if these sell out you already made a certain amount right if they sell out and somebody's like yo bro I really need that so there's certain pieces that we could like the rhinestone one like the long sleeve it took us so long and we ordered a certain amount of rhinestones that once we sell out we're probably not gonna remake those no mm-hmm. unless we do a, a big restock there's certain like. There's certain products that like we're like okay we made it it was easy to like not easy to make but like it was easier to make we'll do a small restock but there's some pieces that are like way too hard or we're so limited on on the material that we won't be able to restock them. Okay. Is that a, a thing too where it's kind of like we're already past that vision? No, it, where we got to keep working on the next idea or something that you kind of don't want to revisit right. back or something. Right. So I mean, in the past we have done restocks on certain things that people have like been. There's times where people DM us like, "Oh, come on, please restock this, please restock this," and like, there's times where, like, I mean, shit, I could restock it and make more money if I really wanted to. But I'm like, something's not about the money. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know what, like. I'm past that vision. I have a better vision now. Like, like he said, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm already working on something better that you guys are gonna like. Yeah, like, yeah. So there's times where I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna restock it. Like, I could easily, we could re- easily restock it, make more money. But like I said, sometimes it's not about the money. And that, that makes the people that did get it feel a little bit more better about it. Cause like, right. man, I got this when, exactly. like, you know what I mean? 
You and like, like lose the exclusivity too right, of yeah. it too when you like, oh, I'm gonna restock it. Then people are like, okay, like what's the point of restocking it? getting it on the drops? Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you might as well always make it available on a site or something. Right, which like we always try to do a, a like whenever we drop stuff, we always try to get a, a good amount because we, we want everyone to feel like we want everyone to have the opportunity to get it. Yeah. You know, like I can't promise anyone to anything, like anyone, like they're gonna get a piece, but like. We make it fairly easy. Like, we're not selling out in, like, five, four minutes, you know? Yeah. Like, it does take, like, I think, what was the fastest we ever sold out on a project? I think, like, two or three days, we just... Yeah. That's so, pretty, like... That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, it that's is crazy. Good. It is good. But, like, we're not, like... There's brands out there that sell out in, like, a minute, you know? And I buy mm. those brands, you know? Like, yeah. sometimes it's hard to get those pieces... But I'm like, shit, I need this, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, but you guys are probably went from, like, sitting on it for... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A year. For a no, while. We're, we're, I mean, we're grateful for those, you know, two or three days that we sell out. Yeah, that's that's a big milestone to be yeah. able to say, like, you guys were sitting on it for, I like, to say, months or weeks or whatever like that, yeah. to be mm-hmm. like, oh, the, that gap has slowly over time just continued to right. decrease and decrease. So eventually you get to that point where you're like, like, the minute you hit send, it's, yeah, it's right. gone. Yeah. Like, it's done. Eventually. Sometimes I can't even get my own piece, you know? For yeah, there'll be times where we'll forget our own piece, literally. And I'll be like, bro, we need a restock just because I want a piece. <laughs> I'm like, he'll be like, are you sure? I'm like, damn, I didn't get a piece. Because that's true. Like, if, it, if, you, if your shit wears out or something you, like, really, like, beat yeah. up, you're like, damn, we got to restock because I need this yeah, one again. Yeah. And there's been, there's been pieces where I'm like, where I just have washed it way too many times, like, over 100 times and... I'm like, damn, I wish, you know, it was still fresh, you know, yeah. still new. There is one piece that I have, you guys, I got bleach on it. Oh, <laughs> well, my girl got bleach on it. But I got bleach on it, I was like, shit, now I got I to gotta bleach the whole fucking thing yeah, to yeah. try to make it look good. So I'm trying to do that because there's, it's, I mean, this is years ago. Right, yeah. right, so right. it's like, it's not, it's not restockable. It's, it's right, done. Right. Um, so now you got to go with it. Sav, how do you feel, bro? I feel good, man. I'm just in my mind when you talk about all these things, I'm just excited to see where you guys are going to be two, three years from now because the progression has already been there. It's kind of like what's what's the next step, you know what I mean? Or I'm, I know you guys are going to be killing it, you know, still moving forward. So right. what do you guys envision for yourselves? Have you guys thought about this? Of Like, you know, we need, not saying you're trying to hit certain numbers or nothing like that, but what what is the the main goal of what you're doing here? Because you're, you're crea- you created something already. It's, no, what's... what's what, how do you want to move with for God and Angels? So one big thing, um, it, which we were supposed to do this year, but with COVID and it was harder to do, but we really want to get like the community involved. And mm-hmm. uh, what I mean by that is like, we want to do more pop-up shops, more experience with the brand, like not just shopping online. We don't plan on opening up a store. Like yeah. th- that's old fashioned. I'm not going to open up a store. Right. Uh, we just want to stay online, but I definitely want to do cool pop-up shops with like, visions only being open for a day or two yeah uh we want to do like live screen printing you know get people to like learn how to screen print yeah or even apply the rhinestones onto their own pieces uh so we, we yeah. can we can make that happen here do a workshop right <laughs> oh, yeah, here we got yeah. the space yeah, yeah. matter of fact bring in the people right now <laughs> <laughs> because that'd be pretty cool if you oh, yeah. sell as a package you're like right. okay we're gonna do an event where you buy x amount of material and then you just like a like a wine and sip you oh, know, yeah, exactly, but you're yeah. but you're doing like uh, or a paint and or a wine and right, paint right. whatever, but um you're doing like okay this is your X amount of t- material like whatever your design is we'll we'll help you figure that out right and just because like since I feel like since we know all the manufacturer stuff we do the printing we do the rhinestones we do all that like I feel like it'll be cool to share you know that with the people the community around us. Go ahead and, like I said, in the camera, we just sign off. Just say, uh, again, what's your names, again? And then also, like, um, just where they can find you. Obviously, we have it up right here, but um, whatever social medias you have, just throw them out there. All right, brother. You go to, I'm Alex. Go ahead. <laughs> and I'm you know, try to support an independent brand. For Guy and Angel, we are Chicago-based. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram. We do have a drop. November eighteenth. I don't know when this video is gonna be dropping. It'll be it'll be well before then. Yeah, it definitely before. All right. Then. So, so November eighteenth, we got one of our biggest drops that we have dropped in a while. So, um, yeah, make sure you go, go to support us. Go check us out. 
Uh, What's the, the your your tags on social media? So for guy and angel dot USA is our Instagram. We're, we're 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 on Twitter and Facebook, but like we only use Instagram. So just follow us on Instagram and uh, stay in tune with you know our. We're gonna keep everyone updated on the stories. Okay, and they could get all the gear from from the links within the, the right. profile. Yeah, right? on the bio we have the website for guy and angel USA dot okay. com. Okay, yeah. cool. Everything's gonna be on there. Uh, we, we we do. Uh, the 18th is going to be a Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. Central Time. All right. Perfect. You can get 15% off, too, if you purchase right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Make sure to add your phone number for 15% off. <laughs> He's like, uh. <laughs> Um, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you guys stopping oh, no, no, by. No. It's been it's been great. Obviously, we got the nerves out of the way and everything. Oh, yeah, Everything's yeah, yeah. been this good. This is our first podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been great. I appreciate it. Hopefully, we have you guys back on again. And there, oh, we, yeah, we, as you guys hit different different uh, you know milestones in your in your careers and your as your brands or even as individuals too, I'd love to have you guys as as a guest coming back on too as well. No, definitely. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you guys for inviting us over. You know, yeah, asking questions and stuff. You know. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Sab, you want to sign us out? Yeah, uh, this has been a, a, a Radio Rejects episode. And before we go, though, I just want to say, like, thank y'all. Like, I know when you guys first started, too, you guys were always trying to give me shirts. And just, like, you guys made me feel special as a DJ as well, too. Just seeing that, like, this new brand is coming up and they believe in me and they're willing to give me merch, like, that shit meant a lot. And you, had, like, you made custom one-on-ones. Like, oh, yeah. I still got that shit hanged up in my closet. I look at that shit, yeah, like, all the time. I'm like, damn, that's dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm just truly appreciative because it's like it takes a community and what you guys are talking about, what you're trying to build here, like it's a community, it's a network of people that are doing shit, that are passionate about what they do. So I'm I'm blessed to be a friend of you guys and just seeing your growth. So um, I think with that, this has been a, a pleasure and uh, we're out. Peace. Peace.